everybody! Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I think you should read for nonfiction November. So hi! My name's Talia. I love books. I love bandanas. I'm so glad you're at my channel today. I am still filming with kittens, so I apologize in advance for any kitten shenanigans that may or may not happen during the filming of this video. But basically, what this video is, is my recommendations to you for nonfiction November. Um, I'll be doing a different video with the books that I plan to read this year, but these are books that I have read and enjoyed and think you will enjoy too. So let's jump right into it. The first book that you should read for nonfiction November is The Light in Hidden Places by Sharon Cameron. Um, this is about a girl who grew up in Poland and um, takes place during the German invasion of Poland um, during um, the Nazi regime. And um, it covers the story of this girl who decides to um, hide Jews in this like above area, above where she lives, like in this attic area. Um, and I can't remember how many she ends up hiding, but I think there's like between eight and 10 at one point that are hiding up there. It's like she hides one family and then they make room for another. And it's like months and months that they hide in this ceiling above her house. Um, so there's definitely some very intense moments. Um, and this poor girl has to work like 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and is trying to find enough food to like support these people. Um, and I just thought it was such a great touching story um just about the the terrible things humans can do to each other and also um some of the compassion and amazing things that humans can do for each other so i i love that i really recommend that book the next book I recommend that you read is um, Between Two Kingdoms by Suleika Jawad. This is about a girl named Suleika. She's in college. She starts having these like um, pains and feeling really weak and run down and it ends up she has like this really severe form of leukemia. Um, and it follows her story, um, follows her struggles really in depth of what it's like to be a young woman and have that disease and um, goes through her remission and then kind of her um, journey as she becomes a journalist and is writing about it. And then um, kind of covers her traveling around the United States by herself, like learning to drive for this mission because she grew up in New York. Um, um, driving around and visiting the people that she's communicated with or that had an impact with her during her sickness. So um, such a touching story, such a wonderful human being. Um, I, I can't recommend it enough. It was, it's a great story. So I have a couple of animal books to recommend to you because I love a good animal story. So um, How to Be a Good Creature by Cy Montgomery is amazing. Um, Cy Montgomery is a scientist, animal lover, and she is an amazing writer. So in How to Be a Good Creature, she tells, I think it's 10 stor short stories, and it's about how animals impacted her throughout the course of her life, from when she was young to into her adult life. And there's pictures about like stories about a pig and stories about a dog and an octopus and um she just has a way of telling stories that um makes you feel what she is feeling and if you listen to her audiobooks she reads them and you can just feel like the excitement about these animals in um in her in her voice and she just does such a great job did you want to say hi say hi i'm a kitten um so yeah, I absolutely love, um, I've, I've loved everything that I have written, uh, that I have read from her. But, um, if you, um, haven't read any Cy Montgomery, you definitely should. And that book is a great place to start. Another book about animals is Funny Farm, My Life with 600 Unexpected Rescue Animals, and that's by Lori Zielinski. And, um, Lori grows up with her mom and a couple of siblings, one sibling, two siblings, I can't remember. Um, Lori grows up with her mom and siblings and she um, has this abusive father and um, they end up living in like this really poor, like run down place, but making ends meet as moms know how to do. And um, they start adopting animals. And um, I don't know, one thing kind of leads to another and the ball is rolling and then there's more and more animals. And it's kind of the story of Lori going from that to now running this rescue farm 
farm with over 600 rescue animals. And like, she has this like whole community formed around saving animals. And it's so neat because now you can like follow her Facebook page and like see all the animals um, that she, some that she talks about in this book and some that she, um, that she um, has acquired since writing this book. And it is just such a heartwarming story because as you can see, I love animals, especially cats. So, so um, yeah, it's just, it's a really heartwarming story. And if you like animals and like hearing about animals, um, being rescued and taken care of and given a second chance when they otherwise um, would not have one. Um, it's it's a really good one. It's a good read. Okay, you know I'm gonna have an astronaut story for you. So if you like space travel at all, this is kind of a, I think, not very well-known astronaut that um, you should know. Um, so Off the Planet by Jeffrey M. Leninger. Um, he went and spent some time aboard the the Russian spaceship Mir, which is um, the space station Mir, which was um, orbiting around the Earth prior to the International Space Station. Um, and it's just really interesting. It just tells about his training and um, what it was like working with the Russians in a time when like the US and the Russians didn't have like the greatest relationships politically. Um, yeah, it tells about um, this crazy fire they had on the space station that was um, kind of hidden from the media because they didn't want everyone to know like the problems they were having up there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really good astronaut story. So I love stories about space. So this is definitely one. If you feel like that at all, you should totally read this. Um, another is for you Michael fight Michael Crichton fans out there. Um, did you know that Michael Crichton wrote a memoir? If you didn't, you should. Here it is. It's called Travels. Um, so Michael Crichton wrote this, um, starts like at the beginning, like with him in medical school and his journey starting writing, um, and then kind of carries him through like his life and starting to produce movies and writing more and more books and his travels that he took around the world um is just super interesting um he was kind of a weird guy like there's some like um i don't know i don't want to i don't want to spoil but just say like he did some weird things um so yeah it was just really interesting and um i love michael Crichton. i am a big fan of his work so um this is a book i would definitely recommend if you are too Another book you should read is Smoke It's In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. Um, this is about a girl who graduates college and goes to work in a crematory. Um, and she is in charge of everything from going and collecting bodies after people pass away to um, cremating them and embalming and all the things. And I can't remember exactly how I came to read this book because it doesn't seem a book you would like, like a book you would search out but let me tell you it was so interesting just knowing about the process of after death as it happens in our country um and she talked some just about how our process of death differs from other countries like for example like in the united states we kind of like get the bodies out as soon as we can where in some cultures they like keep the body there for three days and like dress it and put perfume on it and like want it to stay with them um so she talked just about that and kind of our culture of death and i just I learned a lot from it. So if that interests you in any way, like definitely a book you should read. I feel like it was really well done. Um, yeah, this is so good. The Sound of Gravel is another book that you should add to your list to read this nonfiction November. Um, this book is by Ruth Warner and it covers the story of her childhood growing up in a Mormon polygamist colony in um, Mexico. And she lives with her mom and a whole bunch of other siblings. And there is her father who is this very intense man um, who has a bunch of other wives and kind of travels around to the women making all these babies and he is super abusive um physically and ends up um there being some like sexual abuse with the children that um is just crazy and it's a story of survival and a story of ruth finally escaping this um this colony when it's all she has known and all she's grown up with and it's her like finding a way out um so definitely a story of like resilience and um yeah a, a tough one it's a tough one because there's like just little that happens but um definitely a good read definitely a story will make you um 
be like, wow, she endured so much. And she, it seems like she's doing well now. I feel like you um, going through things like that, you could definitely like have a lot of problems later in life. And obviously I don't know her personally, but I remember after reading this book, I kind of looked up like, what's she doing? What's, what's she doing? Like, and um, it seems like she's doing good telling her story and like talking about what she experienced. So yeah, definitely a tough one, but one that I definitely recommend you should read. Okay, um, also you should read When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Muhammad. I've talked about this a little bit on my channel. Um, this is a nonfiction middle grade um, and it is a graphic novel. It's a beautiful um, graphic novel. And this is about Omar um, and his time spent in a refugee camp um, growing up in a refugee camp with his brother. Um, and this was super eye opening. I had not given a lot of thought to refugee camps and what it would like to be grown up in one, growing up in one. And particularly, um, just the challenges that you would face and how there's no way really out of the refugee camp in many cases. And, um, there's just not enough food, there's not enough water, there's not enough anything. And just that this is the way of life um, for millions of people around the globe. And um, Omar Muhammad is doing tons right now to raise awareness for this problem. And one of the ways he's doing that is by reading, writing this book about his story. So um, if you don't know about the refugee crisis or um, want to know more, like this is an easily digestible, like. I mean, entertaining, but I don't want to say entertaining because it's like, it's really sad, but like, this is a great digestible way to, um, to read about it. Okay. Last but not least, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, um, by Rebecca Skloot. Um, if you have benefited from modern medicine in any way, you should read The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. This, um, is the story of Henrietta who passed away from... I think it was cervical, either cervical or ovarian cancer. Um, black woman, early forties, fifties. So black woman in the fifties, she goes to the hospital for treatment of her cancer. Um, while she's being treated, they take some of her cells, um, without her knowledge, without her permission. And, um, she ends up passing away, but they use these cells. Um, they discover that her cells like divide super well and are easy to reproduce in a lab. And they end up producing like millions and millions of them. And they are used for the polio vaccine, cancer research, just like tons and tons and tons of things like modern medicine as we know it today is basically based from the research from Henrietta Lacks cells, like a ton of it, like a ton of it is. And so that's amazing. But the worst part is that her family didn't know anything about her cells being taken and like didn't receive any monetary, um, any monetary like help. And they were so poor that they could not even afford their own health insurance. So meanwhile, like pharmaceutical companies end up like producing these cells and these cells are sent like all over the world and her family had no idea. So definitely a lot of controversy, but also, um, just an amazing story of science and how much they were able to do with her cells. So again, if you have benefited from modern medicine, if you have had the polio vaccine, like you should know about Henrietta Lacks. So this is definitely one you should read too. So yeah, there's a wide variety of books on this list and all of them, you can tell I'm like talking about them just bring me joy. They were all, um, such good reads, like from the sad to the animals to the like overcoming adversity. Um, I just love these books. So I hope you pick up one or two of these and add them to your TBR for nonfiction November. Um, it's one of my favorite events of the year. I really like, I really like middle grade March and I really like nonfiction November. So, um, stay tuned because I am currently compiling my list of what I'll be reading for nonfiction November. So, um, I will be sharing that with you at a later time. I hope you are doing well wherever you are. I hope you take some time today to read a good book or two. And if you are having a bad hair day, just wear a bandana. Bye.